Activision. I want a divorce. Divorce. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I didn't see that one coming. So, I'm sure as most of you know by now, Activision and Bungie are no longer together. And in this relationship, Bungie took the kids. And in this case, of course, that is the Destiny IP. And this is big, guys. It's big. And it's not just big for Destiny, which of course, we'll see a fair few changes because of it. But this could potentially be massive for the gaming world as a whole. And for those of you who want to know my reaction to this news when I first heard it, as a longtime Destiny fan, even though I was, and am still very skeptical of the split, it went something like this. No mind if I hit that. Yeah! What is up guys, welcome back to TGG. If it's your first time here, I'm all about making videos that can help you make better decisions on what games to buy, but also create conversations around those games. And I just want to thank all of you guys watching. We just hit 100 subscribers, which is a pretty big milestone for the channel. And it just feels great knowing that I can create videos that you guys are enjoying, and I hope that in some way, shape or form, it can entertain you, make your day a little better, or even just get your mind ticking about the games we all love. So let's keep it going. Now there's a lot to go over here, and I want to split it up into two sections what this means for Destiny, because obviously there will be massive implications going forward, but also something that people aren't really looking at, and that's how this could potentially change the future of gaming. So we'll talk about that at the end. But starting with Destiny, I think this is a move that maybe a lot of us had dreamed of, but never really thought it would happen realistically. See, I'm very pro-developer, and honestly, I'm anti-publisher. It's been too often that we've seen publishers push developers way too hard, and force them to meet unrealistic deadlines, unnecessarily monetize certain parts of games, and release DLCs in a certain fashion that's often very anti-consumer. And just in the past few years alone, we've seen it with games like Battlefield and Star Wars Battlefront, arguably The Division, and undoubtedly Destiny as well. I'm sure a lot of you have played The Witcher 3, but for those of you that haven't, it's developed by a studio called CD Projekt Red. And they are an independent studio like Bungie is now. One of the things that stuck with me about The Witcher actually had nothing to do with the game at all. As soon as I opened the game case, I didn't see the disc. Yes, the, di the disc was in there, okay, but that wasn't the first thing I saw. Alright, the first thing I saw was a letter. And it was a letter from CD Projekt Red. I can't remember exactly what it said, but it was something along the lines of thank you for buying our game. We put a lot of time and effort into The Witcher, and from us here at CD Projekt Red, we really hope you enjoy it. And when I read that, I thought, wow, I've never seen that before. And it made me feel like more than just a number, or more than just $60 to the company. It made me feel like they actually cared about my experience with the game. One of the most telling parts of Bungie's vision for Destiny was after the release of Forsaken, when Luke Smith, one of the developers, said that Bungie was very happy with the reception of Forsaken, while Activision were unhappy with the sales performance of the DLC. Now look, we don't know the ins and outs of this split, and we don't know what parts of the Destiny franchise was Bungie's decision and what was Activision's. And I'm in no way stating that Bungie is completely innocent for the things like the microtransactions, rushed content, very bad sandbox decisions like the removal of primary, secondary, and heavy weapons, to primary, primary, and power weapons, and also poor DLCs like Black Armory. Because it's important to remember that this was actually a mutual split, meaning that both Bungie and Activision wanted to make this divorce happen. It's simply stupid to be blind enough to think that Bungie is a saint in this situation. So there's a real possibility that Activision didn't like the direction Bungie was taking with Destiny and decided to cut their losses now before it gets any worse. But if we put that to one side, I think this statement from Luke Smith just goes to show that the vision for Destiny is different for Bungie than it is for Activision, and that they really care about what their fans want and think about the game. We also shouldn't forget that it was Bungie who flew out a lot of Destiny YouTubers to their studio last year to get feedback on how they can improve the game. 
it wasn't Activision that did that. And on top of that, we've also heard that Bungie employees were literally popping champagne when they heard that they were no longer partnered with Activision. And I think all of this is summed up by Luke Smith's tweet after the split, where he said, Guardians make their own fate, which of course alludes to the final fight against Atheon in the Vault of Glass in Destiny 1. Nice. Which, once again, just shows that this is something that Bungie is very pleased about, which is, of course, great. So, this leads us to the future of the Destiny franchise, and I'm very excited for what we're going to see in the next few years from Bungie, but this split isn't without its downfalls as well. What this is going to allow Bungie to do is follow their own vision for the Destiny franchise, so in the future we can probably expect things like new enemy races, different types of DLCs, and an overall more ambitious approach to the Destiny universe. But with that said, Bungie has said that their plans for Destiny 2 are still going to remain unchanged changed, and the content release plan that they already released for this year will go ahead as scheduled. So what does this mean? I think it's safe to say that after this year of content, that'll be it for Destiny 2, and Bungie will go ahead to work on recreating the Destiny series in the form of Destiny 3, or whatever name they choose to call it. So let's talk about what the next Destiny game could possibly have in store. The first thing we'll have to talk about for Destiny 3 is, unfortunately, we should probably expect more content droughts. And this is both a good and a bad thing. Activision is a very wealthy company, and while they were with Bungie, they provided the funding for Bungie to create new content every few months. Bungie no longer has that financial stability, so what us Destiny fans will need to expect is less frequent content, but when we get that content, it should be pretty good because it's solely Bungie's content and is following Bungie's vision, just like Forsaken did, which was one of the best, if not the best DLCs Destiny has ever had. And that financial stability leads us to another massive point of contention, and that's the monetization of the game. Because we have to remember, Bungie has to pay their staff. They have to pay a lot of money to create every bit of content we get. So how are they going to get enough money to actually fund the game? And this is where we could see Destiny change a lot. And there's a lot of different directions Bungie can take. One of those is we could see more monetization through microtransactions and Eververse. Or maybe Bungie goes in the complete opposite direction and maybe makes Destiny 3 free to play initially, but turns the game into a subscription service like a game like World of Warcraft, for example. Or maybe they just keep the current formula of a full price game with paid expansions as well. We just don't know. But my bet is that Bungie will change it up, but in what way, we'll have to wait and see. And now I want to talk about what this means for the future of gaming. And a lot of you might be thinking, what the hell are you talking about, TGG? Well, hear me out. Assuming that Bungie doesn't partner with another publisher, Bungie is going to be the test dummy for a lot of other developers. If Bungie is successful in their solo venture and Destiny is a massive hit in the next few years, this could be the start of a massive trend for developers. So many great companies are currently under the thumb of their publishers, and when I say that, some of the devs that come to mind are ones like Blizzard, DICE, Bioware, even Treyarch with the Call of Duty series. Can you imagine what we could possibly see if those companies decided to go in their own direction? The types of games we'd get, and on top of that, increased focus on being pro-consumer? It would change games forever. But of course, right now, all of that is nothing more than speculation, and all of that potentially lies on Bungie's shoulders, and could only happen if Bungie succeeds. Because, like I said before, it's simply just stupid to think that everything that went wrong with Destiny was Activision's fault, but time will tell as to who was right and who was in the wrong. So, to Bungie. Thank you for making Destiny. As a longtime fan, even though it's had its negatives, I've enjoyed it a lot. And myself, and I think the entire gaming world, wish you the best of luck in the future. We'll be watching. So now I want to flip the conversation over to you. What are your thoughts on this split? Who's in the right? Who's in the wrong? And what do you think this means for the future of Destiny? Let me know, and I'm really looking forward to having some good conversations in the comments below. Also, I just want to give a big shout out to Dutch Artworks. He's a sub on this channel, and he actually designed the new channel art for this channel. So thank you so much for that, man. It looks great. So that'll do it for today, guys. I really do hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, smash that like button if you did enjoy it, and subscribe for more videos like this once and sometimes twice per week. If you want to watch some more TGG videos, click one of the two videos on the screen if you haven't seen them yet, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace!